Welcome to the Shields on Hoops podcast. I'm here with Nick Peckham for episode number two of the 23-24 campaign. Um, if you like what we do here, like, like I've said before, give us a like, subscribe, whatever it is that you guys who listen to podcasts do uh, to, to bump ours up. We'd appreciate you. Um, so Syracuse is coming off a pretty convincing win um, against Damon, uh, especially in the first half. Uh, a little sloppiness in the second. Um, we're going to talk about that a little bit today. We're going to talk about football really quickly, even though this is a basketball thing, just because I, I, I was an eyewitness to the to the to, to Thursday night. So I'll recap that for you guys. Um, and then we'll kind of talk about things going forward with the orange. Nick, you want to add anything before we get before we dive in? Uh no, nah, I don't have much. Um again, we're we'll dive into it in a couple of minutes. Um I will say the one thing I took away from watching the game last night was it felt different. Um from start from tip off to finish. It it felt different. And yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. Yeah, I agree. So what really felt different was being in Blacksburg on Thursday night because that's where I was. And, um, man, like I, I was – I was we were talking before the pod, but, man, on, on my Twitter I was, I was tweeting things out. The service is terrible there, so, like, I could just tweet out now and then. Uh, awesome atmosphere. Okay, incredible atmosphere. Like bumping from an hour and a half before kickoff. Like just – they had guys parachuting in with like the American flags and the tech flags, like parachutes over the top. They had fireworks. They had, I mean, kids singing a song, obviously Sandman. Uh, it was hyped up there. Uh, and like for the way, you know, we talked also uh, what a big game it was for Syracuse. I feel like that game pretty much started basketball season for a lot of people. Um, <laughs> like, I think that was kind of the thing that kind of just, uh, we were just the, the timing of, Exhibition starting on Friday, the next, the next day. I think I think a lot of people were like, "Okay, that's I'm I'm checking out." Like I watched the games, but I'm checking out. So I, I think uh, that got some excitement about the the hoop season as well. And man, I, when I tell you, I've sat through some I've sat through some rough Syracuse games. I've sat through some some fun ones, but that was this was probably the most this is probably the worst one I've sat through because it was uh, it, it, imagine like going to a frat party with like 60,000 of your friends and they were, they were passing shots. They were sharing drinks. They were hugging each other, high-fiving people coming up and down the aisles, singing journey at full blast. Like it was, and it was like a non stop party. I know Nick, you said you watched it on TV and, 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 and that was what it looked like on TV too. But it was just, it was one of those games where it's like, I can't even be mad. I'm, I'm just, you guys just have fun. Like, and it, it was like for tech, it was like years of frustration. were all being let out on one night and they were just, they were having a blast. It was 70 degrees end of October, beautiful fall in the, in the blue Ridge mountains. And uh, yeah, it was just, it was rough. It was rough. It was rough. Rough. Yeah. I mean, uh, I know we talked before we did our podcast last time we talked about how big of a game that was coming off their little three game stretch against Clemson, North Carolina and Florida state where they weren't very competitive at all in any of the three yeah. and to come out and start the, the way that they started that game. It was, it, it seemed like a nail in the coffin. Um, I don't think they fired Dino in season. That just doesn't seem, especially this late in the year, but it just, it seemed like one of those things where um, Syracuse has to make a move. And yeah, you know what's going to happen. They're going to win the next. They're going to win like the next four games and like <laughs> slide into a bowl game. But I, it's just it's been um, eight years of what I hate to say it, but uh, m- m- being mediocre. I mean, since Dino, I mean Dino had one good season. Generous. That's generous. But you yeah. you really, I mean, without Eric Dungey, they don't have that 10-11 win season that they had when he first got there. Yeah, but I don't know. I know it's a basketball podcast, so we won't get too much into it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it just it yeah. just seems like it, it, it kind of reminds you of one of those things where um, a guy is at a school and takes that school to where he can, and then it's time to move on to get over that hump. And yeah, I always, you don't, you don't want to hand it off too late. Yeah, I always refer to like Andy Reid when Andy Reid was in Philly, and then mm-hmm. it was kind of at the point where they didn't really work out anymore. And he ended up going to Kansas city. And the, I mean, the rest of his career is history at this point, yeah. but yeah. 
it, it just kind of reminds you of that feeling like we're kind of in that same area where we were with Jim Beheim in basketball for the last couple of years. Like did because he was a Hall of Famer and Sy- obviously Syracuse wouldn't be Syracuse without Jim Beheim being there. Mm-hmm. But did he overstay his welcome? Did Syracuse let him overstay his welcome a little too long? And it's kind of you're in that same boat, so you don't really want to make that mistake twice. Yeah, but and it sucks because he's a great dude. Like he's a good dude. Nobody can. Yeah, no, 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 Nobody no, ever I, debates that. Like that's the hard part. If he was, a, if he was a complete like prick, it would be like easy to. You know, well, he's he's just a good dude. He's a solid guy, and he does a good job raising or like leading young men. And it's just unfortunate that. They just haven't been able to get it done. I mean, lot. listen, like I, I love to have him as an offensive coordinator because that's where his mindset is. But you can't go from head coach to offensive coordinator and in his mind be okay with that. It's not gonna happen. All right. So hoops. So hoops. So hoops, hoops, hoops. All right. So uh last night we watched Damon Syracuse. Um, I'll give opening thoughts. I'll let you give your opening thoughts after that, and we'll talk about each of the players a little bit. Um the vibe was good. The vibe was positive. I felt. Um, and again, you're playing a D two team. You're at home. So it started of a new era. I thought that they were very energetic. I thought that they played very loose, sometimes too loose. Um, I thought that they got after it. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It just seemed like a very positive kind of overall vibe, at least from the TV screen when I was watching, um, and yeah, it just seemed like most guys were happy. I mean, there were moments where guys were frustrated at certain things during the night, but it just seemed like they were having fun hooping. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll start that with my opening kind of kind of statement on it um, was just that it just felt just felt happier, felt positive, felt loose, felt just and not in a disrespectful way like oh you know Coach Beheim's gone so we can do it. It wasn't like that. But it was just you know, like you said, like change is not bad, right? Change is not bad, and I think I think it was very evident last night that it's a good thing or even more reaffirming like last night that it's a good thing that we're kind of going in another direction. And, and again, it's not like they're going 180 and just dropping everything they've done. Right. We get, we hire a guy in house guy who understands the Syracuse way and the culture and the way, the way things are supposed to be done. It's just a different, just different way of doing things. And I think, I think it's a positive thing. I think it's a positive thing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know we talked a little bit during the game last night, but the vi- like you said, the vibes felt different. Um, they definitely were playing a lot looser than they probably normally would, in, especially in an exhibition game. And um, I know I talked to a couple people who went to the game last night, and they just said the atmosphere in the dome felt different. And, I mean, obviously you're going to have that after having a coach be here for, what, 47, 48 years. Yeah. Um, I mean, Jim Beheim spent a majority of – or we'll say 90% of his life in Syracuse and around the Syracuse basketball program. So you're going to have that, but it felt different. Um, and I know we talked about, um, I know we talked, we did a overall on the pregame or preview of the game. And it was one of those games where we talked about a team being experienced and having those, those players that have been there and done that together. Mm-hmm. And I know a lot of people are like, well, they didn't blow them out and what this and whatnot. But it comes down to that team never really let Syracuse grab that twenty point hold and run away yeah. with it. So yeah, I mean that team that team's gonna win twenty five games this year. Oh, easily, easily, like, easily. They're gonna win twenty five games in D two. Like they're they're gonna they're gonna be in the D two tournament. And again, you know, Syracuse didn't have an NBA player play last night, right? Like we got a guy, like you got a fir- probably a first round draft pick not playing. Okay, so we well, not first, but we'll see. But you got it. You got a NBA. You got a professional player not on the court. So there's that, right? <laughs> Um, and again, I mentioned this in the, in the pre, um, pregame one was that, you know, this is, this is their second trip of like a real game. This is the first time Syracuse put anything out on the floor at all. You know, Damon played Buffalo a couple of days before. So that does make a difference. Um, I think anyway. All right. So, all right, let's talk about some of these guys. Um, I'll start with, um, we'll just kind of hop around popcorn a little bit, but, uh, obviously JJ had a great game. Um, uh, I think that he, I, I got to see him play a little bit last year, in Notre Dame. But definitely, he seemed a lot more loose than he was last year at Notre Dame. I felt like at times he had to kind of cater to those uh, seniors. Um, but I thought he was very free flowing. He made a he had a couple of takes that were just like, "Whoop, see ya!" <laughs> like you know, just like "Adios," like <laughs> you are gone. Um, I guess the, he got to the rim so well. That's some really nice soft finishes at the rim. A lot that showed some great touch. Um, shit, 
distributed the ball pretty well. Kind of had to last night just because, you know, uh, Judah was out with that precautionary injury, um, which doesn't seem to be anything to worry about. But, yeah, I thought he did a great job. I don't think he forced the issue. A couple times he forced the issue a little bit, but I don't think that – I don't have a lot of complaints about the way um, – Starling handled things last night. He's going to, he's going to be tough. I think he's going to have a really, really good year. Yeah. I think it was good. Um, obviously with Judah not playing last night, I think it was good for Syracuse fans to see JJ in that starting point guard role to where he could really showcase himself. And um, like you said, I think he, he played a lot more loose than he did at Notre Dame last year. Um, obviously there was a lot of things going on at Notre Dame. They were loaded with upper classmen, it was Mike Braid decided midway through the year to announce that he was retiring. They weren't really having that good of a year. So there was a lot of things behind the scenes at Notre Dame. But um, I will say, I think the biggest thing I took away from JJ last night, and um, I have the box score in front of me, but um, he finished with 10 points, six assists, six rebounds, and played all 40 minutes, which I know it's an exhibition game, but to see him be out there and be willing to play all 40 minutes should – say a lot about who he is and where this program wants to wants to be at the end of the day. That's why you know, like I think I think on the first pod you mentioned, you know, those guys, you know, maybe not maybe not playing as much, but I, I don't know, man. I think I think JJ and Judah are not going to come off the floor very much at all. I feel they better s- about go ahead. <laughs> no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. I feel better about the quote unquote backup point guard situation. Um both with the fact that seeing JJ run it was very like that was encouraging um because i had my concerns because again last year he he didn't really distribute super well um and even seeing uh kyle cuff play that was encouraging as well like i i feel i feel i feel pretty good about that kind of three-headed point guard monster of starling mints and um cuff and i think it also allows quadier to play off the ball a little bit too um, but we'll talk about him in a, in a little bit. Obviously, we'll talk about um, about Claudier. But yeah, I, I really felt I feel better about the point guard position when Judah's not in the floor. Now that just kind of watching the way that Starling kind of handled things last night. Yeah, and on on that point, um, since you brought him up already, um, I'll go into our next player. Um, Kyle um, was very impressive to me last night. Um, I know we talked about – you asked me who were uh, – I think we each gave two guys that if they got hurt outside of the big three, um, who would – and I know Kyle was my first guy that I mentioned. Um, but, yeah, he was very impressive um, running the show, attacking the rim, uh, hitting some threes on the defensive end. Um, I was very impressed with his overall game. I know a lot of people didn't – I mean, he only played, what, six minutes, I think, last year in total at Kansas. So – you Nobody really knew who he was, but it was a big step in the right direction for this program and for him um, yeah. to know that, like you said, that our backup guard spot, if Judah or JJ happened to come off the floor, or like last night, if they hold Judah out for a game for an ankle injury or something like that, yeah. to have a guy that you can rely on to not miss a beat. And look, both of the Judah and JJ might both be gone next year. Like, they both might be gone next year. So having somebody like Cuff who develops this year and kind of and kind of grows in that position, you know, who knows who we bring in. But having a guy like that that you can kind of feel confident about, really he's just kind of being Samir, right? Like he's really coming in and taking like doing what Samir did last year. And I think he might be a little more overall like I, I thought Samir played hard and I thought he did some good things, but I feel like Cuff might be a little more skilled than he was, um, at least like down the line, right? Yeah. Also back back to Starling. Six assists last night, season high last year, three. All right, season high last year, three assists. So that that's why. And like you said, he looked, worried, right? yeah. he looked very good running the show. He was getting yeah, no, he, teammates involved, and he wasn't just looking to score, but there was times where he would attack the rim where you were like, wow. You yeah, didn't see right that, like, that type of burst and athleticism last year at Notre Dame from him. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, exactly. Yeah, that that's – and, you know, I'm just – imagining you know those two judah and jj on opposite sides of the ball, like just off sides of the floor just that that's that's a lot to guard that's a lot that's a lot that's a load for people to handle um, and, I know they, and i know they mentioned it last night there was at one point i think judah or um sorry jj he got a rebound and he got the rebound and went right up court and they were every, everybody ran with him and it's just 
to have two guys that don't mind rebounding that can also push the ball at the pace that those two can. Yeah. That's that seems very exciting. Yeah. Um Justin Taylor had a great first half. Uh shot lights out. That's what he does, right? That's he was I don't know, did he score the second half? He he was pretty no. cold the second half. I don't think no. he, he did. He hit but, four um, threes in the first half and finished with just I mean, those four. Yeah. In different ways. He he had one off the bounce, he had one off transition, he had one off a, a drive and kick to the corner. So he I thought he did a really good job of like hunting the three-point line. Uh, there were a couple of times he caught it out there about 23, 24 feet. That I thought he was going to pull it. Uh, there were a couple of times and he kind of caught it when the guy kind of stayed back. I thought, he's, he's, is he going to? I thought he was going to, but um, he didn't. So I mean, I feel better about him uh, as well. Not, not, I didn't feel bad about him skill wise, but I, we talked, where is he in the rotation? Like, where is he going to play? Like, you know, like, where is he? Where does he fit? Um, obviously, he gets an offensive burst. He's, he's more physical. He's going to a stronger kid. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was I was very impressed with him. He looks like he's been putting in the work. Um, and then when you look at the, and then, I mean, okay, here's an example, right? Like I, I feel like this is going to happen with Taylor and Chris Bell a lot this year. Like one of them is going to play well, the other one might not. Whoever does is going to get the twenty twenty five, and the other one's going to get the ten or twelve. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Far, I think it's, it's at a point you know, like, where I think that, yeah, you ride the hot hand at that point. Yeah, I lo- I like seeing both of them out there because um, I think that does space the floor nicely. But I think you lose a little bit too much if they're both out there. Um, speaking of Bell, I, he struggled to hit shots. Um, I was glad to see him continue to shoot. Um, I thought he made a couple hustle plays. I thought he he looked like he to me he looked like he was playing a little bit harder, getting after a little bit. But he just yeah just wasn't shooting very well. And if he if he's not making shots. Right, and same with what Taylor. Else, if they, what if else either of them, yeah, before? either of them are not making shots. Like they're not drivers, they're not distributors, they're not lockdown guys on D. They don't rebound super well. Like so, they're not. They don't like if they're not scoring and shooting well. I don't feel like either of them really uh, bring so much to the table that they play, and especially on this team, like with guys coming off the bench. I, it, I, mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, especially with what you saw. I mean, I, I know it's early. They only played one exhibition game, but especially with what you saw from Kyle. I mean, if you play teams that aren't very big, you could play the three guards out there at one time. Cause yeah. I mean, Kyle hit some shots, but yeah, like, like you were saying about Justin, it was nice to see Justin hit some threes. Um, I know he, he talked very, about he looked very comfortable, looked very comfortable. That's the biggest thing I think going into this season is where does that shooting come from? So to see him, I, he shot four of 10 from the field and four of eight from three. Um, I know he, I'll take that every single. I know he four hit all eight. four in the first half, but there Still. was two that really stood out to me. Um, there was one where JJ got the ball in transition and threw it down court and he hit him in the corner and he hit the three. And then the one right before halftime when Judah oh, yeah, yeah. kind of drove funny. down the middle and kicked it out. Yeah. Um, two big things that I noticed with uh, Justin, but like you were saying with Chris Bell, he looked, he didn't play um, very, I mean, I know he didn't hit a bunch of shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was one of seven uh, from the field, one of five from three. He finished with three points, but he looked more comfortable. Yeah. Um, and that brings me into my next point. Um, I'll bring up Benny Williams at this point, And Benny had 11 points. Um, there was, I think his first two, he, he missed a three to start the game. And then his next two baskets, he posted up and kind of did a turnaround from each side of the floor inside the paint. Um, very impressive. Um, obviously we all knew Benny had that in him. It was just getting it out of him, but it seemed like those two guys, and they even mentioned it kind of last night on the broadcast. Uh, it just seemed like those two guys weren't really looking over their shoulder. And they felt more comfortable out there. And it was, and that's no knock towards Bayheim or no knock towards anybody. Um, but they just seemed more comfortable out there and they weren't really looking over their shoulder. Like, if I miss this, I'm I'm coming out and I may not see the floor again for the first half. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 just coaching style difference. You know, whatever, wrong, right, <laughs> different. But I definitely agree with that. I mean, Benny was definitely free. And the thing I like the way Benny played is why I like Benny and why he is the X X factor, right? Like he um is just a very uh he can he can get his own, right? Like last year, even though you know he didn't do it a lot, he was one of the few guys who could go get his own bucket, right? 
uh, like you know, like Joe last year could not go really go get his own bucket. Um, Judah could sometimes. Uh, Jesse couldn't really go get his own bucket, right? He's scoring off pick and rolls and off rebounds and things like that. So, like, um, I think he adds a guy who you can throw it inside to. He can play from the elbow. He can do a lot of things. I think that is why he's going to be such a tough guard. And if he shoots it at 33%, 35%, that's just going to make it even tougher for for, um, for opposing defenses. I think I think he showed exactly what we were hoping to see from him, you know, in like 20, 24 minutes. But he's going to rebound. He's going to play hard. He's going to try and block every shot into the 17th row. Like, he's going to use that athleticism. Um and I think he's I think he's gonna be just fine. Yeah, I feel I feel really good about Benny. Yeah, yeah. Um I, I know we talk a lot about Judah and JJ. Um obviously Benny is probably the uh third guy. What the third guy on the team that is really gonna stick out. He's probably part of that big three. Um he played great uh on the offensive end, um, especially rebounding. Um I was very impressed with his rebounding. Obviously, he's yeah. a tall guy, so he's going to get rebounds. But I think he finished with six. Yeah. Um, he was tied with uh, JJ for the lead for the team for the night. But yeah. um, uh, who else are we? Oh, uh, Naheem McLeod. Um, very impressed with him. Um, I know he had yeah. the dude guarding him was what six five six six. I yeah, think it's a little hard. It's a little hard to really gauge. But yeah, yeah. I thought but, they used him the right way though. I thought they used him the way he should. Pick and roll, throwing it up to him. But he did a good job. He's got an, he's got a nice little left hand kind of little baby hook. I saw that I saw that last year at Florida State. So he's got a couple of things that are nice. His footwork's not too bad. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was definitely hard. It's good. That's a hard one to really gauge him on. Yeah, um, like you said, there was a couple uh, a couple times where he actually posted up and kind of went to his left hand hook shot, and it looked pretty nice. I mean, it's not something that SU is probably going to throw out there five eight times a game but it's just something quick that they could use um if they need a bucket or if he has a size size advantage but um the yeah. lobs and the offensive rebounding putbacks were a nice thing to see um especially him on the defensive end i know we'll t- we'll get to that later but um he clogs up the middle of the paint so i think he as does. a defender you know you have somebody like that behind you um you can be more aggressive on the defensive side of the ball yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah, yeah. I think we'll know more about him. Unfortunately, probably we probably won't know too much about him until like Colgate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, like unfortunately, which is fine. Um, Malik Brown was stuff in the stat sheet until he kind of got hurt. Like he was, I mean, he was like an instant, like just I just came in and just did everything. Uh, picked up right where he left left off. Um, I think he kind of hit that freshman wall last year um, a little bit, but he looked very. Again, he just has a he just has a nose for the ball. He just knows how to be in the right spots. He knows where to kind of be at the right time. He just has a really good feel, good basketball IQ. Um, and I thought that was definitely on display. Um, he's got kind of he looked he had a couple like more explosive type plays too than I feel like last year, which which looked really nice. And I think he's going to be again. He's he's one of those guys who's hard to keep off. Of. Like how do you? It's it's hard to justify him not playing. Yeah, you know I, mean? I mean, I know I that's what happened last year. Like, it's just hard. I, to, how do you justify it? Yeah, I know last night with Hema not or not playing, and um, obviously William Patterson. I don't think he touched the floor at all last night. Um, yeah, yeah. So Malik played in the. I think he only played six minutes, but um, six or eight minutes, something like that. But uh, a lot of it was at the backup five. Um, mm-hmm. But like you said, he came in and he instantly made an impact on the game, uh, rebounding offensively, defensively, hustle plays. Yeah. Um, I also feel like when Malik plays the five, the five and they can spread the floor, um, obviously Judah, JJ, uh, Benny, Malik, and whoever else you want to throw in there at the three position, you can kind of um, switch a lot if you're pressing and things like that because yeah. they can all kind of guard most positions. But sure. um, there was one one play that I wanted to point out. I forgot when we were talking about Benny. Um Benny was at the top of the key, and he made a, a very nice pass to Malik down low. Um, when Malik, I think it was like his first, he just came in the game, and he got a, he ended up getting a dunk out of it. But um, to see a lot of these guys and their IQs, um, they seem to be making decisions this year that they wouldn't have made in the past. Um, mm-hmm. I'll just put it that way. But yeah, I mean, Syracuse, I think finished with I think they had six guys in double figures last last night, which is 
I mean, I couldn't tell you the last time. Even in an exhibition, I couldn't tell you the last time they've had six guys finish in double figures. I mean, they're usually we only play a six-man rotation, yeah. and the guy that comes off the bench doesn't usually score. So it's like it's yeah. nice to see the the ball movement and them kind of spreading things around. Definitely agree. Yeah, definitely agree. I think yeah, I think you just got a lot. You got a lot, you got a lot of basketball guys who also have athleticism on there. Um, yeah. Claudia Copeland. I mean. Also, hard to justify not playing. Um, he had some some kind of silly plays, um, but he also had some uh, like that's just a hooper out there, man. Like that's a that's a guy who knows how to play, and that's a guy who who again, it's like you want guys who have a little edge and have a little. But I trust Claudia Copeland out there on game. If I was playing pickup and I had quad on my team i'd be like give the dude the ball and let's go like let him let him make a play like he's like let him make a play um so i like him i still don't like him starting i like him off the bench i think he's perfect i think him and malik off the bench is just absolutely just beautiful and having chance as well will, will also be a big one um, yeah it brings a different dynamic with yeah. the pot the three of them yeah so i thought i was very impressed with him we could probably talk about him for a while but i thought he did everything that we were hoping to see from him he looks a lot again. Another guy who is looks way more, a lot more confident, a lot more free, a lot more loose. Um, and again, well, the ball's in his hands a little bit more. And what I'm telling you, man, that that freshman to sophomore jump, I've been saying it for a year. That freshman to sophomore jump is a real thing, right? A real thing. Just comfortable in his skin now. Um, you know, I think Autry is just going to kind of let him be who he is. And there's going to be those. It, it's there's a couple of trade offs on this roster, right? Like Copeland and his flair and what he does and the good things he brings, he's going to turn it over. He's going to do silly things like shoot last night. Uh, last yeah. night he, he made a play and then he didn't get back on defense. And he was like, just, he, he was doing his thing, you know, he was whatever, he, you know, just getting all excited. And yeah, his man, got, he was late. He was late down the floor, gave up a three to a team that shoots a lot of threes, like, you know, it's a report. So um, it's just, it, that's just who he is. And same thing with Taylor and bell, right? Like you're going to get shooting, but you're going to have to live with, they're going to get beat baseline every now and then. They're not going to get every, they're not going to get the rebound every rebound. It's just who it's just who you have on the roster. So it's just kind of yeah. thinking what are what are your trade offs you're okay with, um, with with those three guys, which is also why they're not in star roles yet, like Judah is and JJ is and Benny is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just sitting here, and uh, obviously, I said I had the box score in front of me, but when you look at Quidier's line last night, uh, twelve points. Five rebounds, nine assists, uh, four steals, thirty-two minutes. Like he was all over the floor. Um, He's out there a lot. See him have not nine assists was pretty <laughs> impressive. Um, mm -hmm. But he shot ten. He was five of ten from the field. I mean, fifty percent. But I, he may have not shot ten shots all year last year. Yeah, and they were good shots. They were good shots. They were yeah, good shots. I mean all of them. And then he had he had the one play where um, he was on the fast break and he threw it off the glass to Benny. Um, yeah. And then I know after the game, they asked him about it. And he's like, well, Benny has a 40-inch vertical. So if he didn't catch it, I couldn't take the blame for that. So, that I mean, they had that going. Yeah. But um, Yeah, and, and such a great teammate, man. I mean, even last year when he was buried in the bench, like just a great teammate, super enthusiastic. He's a guy you want. I'm really glad he stayed. I really hope he's a four-year guy um, for Syracuse. Uh, who else we got? Oh, Peter Carey made an appearance, right? Um, so I, I see why they like him. And I also see why he can't play that much, <laughs> right, right? Like he's just not there, right? Like he, he he did some right. I think he got some really kind of crappy foul calls against him. First off, I know he fouled out like with seven minutes left, but there were yeah, some of those did. I was like, mm, are really? Uh, but he made some good plays. He was active. He was aggressive. Um, I liked him off the bench right there. And again, I, he's probably behind. He's probably behind Hema. But like, I thought that he came in and did some really good things. But also, you can just kind of see he's a little bit laterally, a little bit slower. Like he, this way, he went up and down. He's probably pretty solid, but I think laterally, he's a little bit behind. Um, just a little late in rotations and things like that. But it was great to see him play. I was happy for the kid. He had a, he had a pretty good, you know, first time. Touch. Well, I guess he did play against Bryant last year when it was like all men on deck, all hands on deck. But yeah, when Judah got kind of, checked yeah. in that game. Yeah, to see him kind of have a positive. Opening night was a good, was a was a, was a, co a cool thing to see. Cool thing to see. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice to see him on the floor. Uh, first of all, 
Um, it was nice to also, like you said, you can see um, the ups and the downs in his game. You can see, I mean, you can see why the coaching staff um, thrived, thrived about him uh, last season, yeah. um, especially the way he practices and things like that. You could definitely see it, but like you said, to fall out, and I think he played uh, eight minutes and he ended up falling out. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like you said, a bunch of those falls weren't really – I, I'm not 100 percent sure about yeah, a bunch of them, but um, like you said, the, I mean his the upside on the kid is I, I mean I don't know if he's a five in college. Uh, he may be more of a four if he kind of can kind of can develop an outside mm -hmm. shot or something like that. Yeah, um, but I mean it was impressive to see him on the floor. I mean that's all you can ask for at the end of the day. Yeah, it was just a positive thing too. So couple guys not on the floor, right? So no Judah Mintz, obviously. We don't have to talk about that. We know the impact that is. Um, no Manu, no no Hema, all right? So we don't – I guess he has a little inner, inner injury as well. I'm assuming that Hema, like I said, probably would have had those carry minutes um, last night. Um, and then no Patterson, which is probably not a good sign for his burn this season or where the coaching staff sees him on the roster, right? Like if it's an exhibition game and you got Peter Carey come up, you got, well, you got one big out. And Peter carries the big you roll with. I don't, I don't see Patterson playing a ton this year, obviously. And, and like I think Autry said, he's like he's a freshman. He's a freshman. Um, so I think they I think they like him. I just think that he's just not he's just not there yet. So I think I think we all kind of knew that coming in that it was more of a uh, I don't want to say project, but just that he's kind of like a, he's like a four year guy, right? If we can keep him for he's three or four years, he's a he's gonna come in as a third and fourth year guy and, and contribute that way. So um, I hope we get to see him a little bit, maybe. Um, on Wednesday, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll see a lot of him in meaningful minutes um, as of right now. And I mean, things change, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I know you mentioned it, but uh, I will throw out there that uh, Judah, it was more precautionary why he set out. Um, he rolled his ankle in practice and obviously it's an exhibition game, so you don't really want him to hurt it worse in an exhibition game that really, I mean, at the end of the day, doesn't matter. Um, obviously, it would have been nice to see him out there and see them get a game together. Uh, we'll see what comes Wednesday uh, if he's healthy enough to play. I mean, even if he goes out there for 15, 20 minutes at the end of the day, um, that would be yeah. better than nothing, truthfully. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, just so everybody knows, the Judah injury is not uh, severe, not long-term. I don't uh, think he – I don't think he said he If it was the first game of the season, he probably would have played him. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I, another thing I'll throw out there is uh, I know – I'm sure you haven't, but I know – I haven't um, seen anything else on Chance yet. Um, I'm hoping at some point we get an update on really what's wrong with him. I mean, I know it was a lower body injury and he needed surgery, but. I, I saw a rumbling somewhere on Twitter about how they expect him to be back like this season. So I, I don't know. Again, it's all. Who knows? We'll see. But and I don't I don't think Hema's injury is a, is a major one either. So I don't think either of those guys will, like have like major things. I think, like you said, just being precautionary, being. Not being and scared. like even the Malik thing, I know Malik kind of got hit. Yeah, he could have played. It was more he of a yeah. let's not push it if we don't have to push it. Yeah, he could have played probably. Yeah. Um. All right. So let's talk. We're going to talk offense, defense, and then we're going to wrap it up here. Um. Offensively, I'll give you my thoughts first here. Um. I thought the flow was nice. I thought the ball was moving. It was kind of popping around the perimeter. I thought the I thought they did a good job of uh, changing sides. With the ball player movement seemed like it seemed like just like a little more like i feel like in the last couple of years not that syracuse didn't run it it felt sometimes like they weren't running anything but what they ran was just so at least in my eyes it just seemed so simple and easy to guard uh i, I thought that there was some false motion last night just like you know just dribble the wing flip it reverse it just to get the defense moving a little bit instead of everybody just stuck in their place and then oh high ball screen or that kind of four out back screen stuff they they run. So I think that I think that there was more movement. I saw a little bit more creativity in the playbook, and I'm sure that you know Autry's not going to show everything during this time. Um, but like there was some 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 Spain action and ball screens. Like there was some good stuff there that I did not see last year. So um, and I, I'm not saying you know Coach Red's a, an offensive genius, and you know we're just going to pick teams apart. But like it definitely looked like a little more intentional to me. Um, and again, but that's how that, and again, that's how, you know, coach Beheim kind of did his thing. That's how he won. He, he did let his guys go and that's fine. But it seems like there'll be a little bit more 
modern, I hate to say the word modern basketball type um, offensive concepts being used. Um, at least that was kind of my uh, take on first glean. Also, I thought that they were very good in transition. Um, I thought that it got a little cute in the second half because they were like, we're just better than these guys. Um, yeah, so I thought I they kind of like got they played a little bit more loose in the second half. Than they there's did. a lot more. There's a lot more intention in the first half because it was like we're going. We're going to play our game. Do what. Do what. You know. Do we did. Do we prep to do? Do we do in practice? Do we do a shoot around? And like after halftime, it was like these were better than these dudes, right? So I think they kind of like just got away from that a little bit, and it became a little more one on one, catch on the wing, dribble. Let me go by this guy type stuff. That's when it got kind of sloppy and messy. Um, and what else was I going to say? Which I don't think is anything to worry. I don't think is anything to really worry about. I think that'll clean up quick. And again, Judah's not on the floor, right? Like say what we want. Like JJ played well, Tough played well, but your point guard's still not on the floor. Okay, like your your point guard still isn't out there. Your general's not out there. It's going to naturally be sloppy. Um, I do think that if you play starters versus starters, Syracuse wins like 30, 35, I think like on, on a normal night, I think they're that much better. Um, but again, it got sloppy. You had, and again, you had different lineups. You had guys in there who wouldn't normally be in there, which it's exhibition season. That's what happens. So I know some people have been like, we're like kind of concerned about the second half. I'm not really concerned no, about no. it. Um, in a game that matters, there's going to be timeouts called. There's going to be substitutions made. There's going to be – it's just it's just like – I mean, I don't, I don't know what your basketball career is like, but like when you were just obviously better than somebody else, it's like almost like sometimes that – like it's hard. It's hard sometimes to just like play at a high level when you know you can just do what you want pretty much. Yeah. Um, you it's, try it's just different. Yeah. This. Yeah, it just makes it, it – just yeah. Like you just kind of try too hard or it's, it's like a psychological thing. But – um, I think that kind of happened in the second half, which is why, which is a, which is a great problem to have, by the way. Okay. Like that's, that's like, that's not a bad problem to have. I think everything that didn't look very, didn't look great last night offensively. is definitely um, easy to, easy to clean up. What are your thoughts offensively? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, I don't have much other than what you said. Um, I do feel like uh, the ball moved a lot more. Um, there was a lot of possessions where, there was probably four or five passes before anybody looked to score. Yeah, it was, nice. it was a, and it was a good mix movement. of ball movement and driving. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Opportunistically, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. Um, to see um, how aggressive JJ was, um, and then knowing how aggressive Judah was last year, and you can only imagine that it's only going to get a little bit better. Kind of in your head, like I mean, I was watching the game thinking like if we do this and we do this, like how nice this would be um, all put together in one. Um, obviously, like you said, we're missing um, probably our best player from the team last year. I mean, he averaged, he was one of the best freshmen in the ACC in college basketball in general. So then I have him, uh, you can't really take much out of it. Um, but they did move the ball and the flow was nice and everything like that. Um, I love that it wasn't just uh, let one guy attack and everybody stand around and watch like mm -hmm. we've been used to. Um, yeah. Everybody, they were setting backdoor screens. They were cutting they were moving without the ball they were setting screens on the ball we were throwing lobs to mcleod and things like that it was a nice um thing to see um obviously and I, I i took an interesting thing away from listening to um the commentators i think it was matt park and matt Rowe who were calling the game last night for acc network and um they said that jj to them um seems like he could be a 15 16 point per game score and obviously, Judah last year averaged close to 17. So to think about that, if you could get 35 to 40 points a night from the two of them, and then obviously you're going to get chip-ins from Benny and Justin or Chris Bell will hit a couple threes night in and night out, and the cleanups from McLeod, and then I'm, you're, you're going to have Ben scoring this year. I mean, I don't see why you wouldn't with Kyle and Quadir and Malik and Chance when Chance gets back. So to see that um, – and hear that it's kind of like, I mean, this team, I mean, I, it might be high expectations, but this team could be a team that could average 75, 80 points a night on a, any given night that they play. Yeah. And defensive possessions are going to be shorter because there's more man. So there'll be more possessions. I think they had 77 possessions last night. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll look it up. How and, much they and, and you're look and you're, I mean, you take that in. And like you said, we didn't have our, uh, our starting point guard. 
mm-hmm. NBA possibly first round draft pick starting point guard. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, what do you think defensively? I'll let you. I'll let you take uh, that. One. So uh, I love the man. Um, I love that they played man. They were very aggressive. They didn't press a lot. Um, I don't know if it was just they didn't want to press so much in an exhibition game or what that was. Um, they made mistakes for sure. Um, they tried to, um, I know you, I think you tweeted about it last night. They tried to use their athleticism a lot to make up for yeah. mistakes, kind of closing out on three pointers. Um, they switched a lot, which I love. So that mm-hmm. way you don't have to worry about ball screens and people getting downhill and things like that. Um, but I thought they played overall defensively. I thought they played really good. Um, the second half, like you said, it kind of got sloppy and, with different rotations and things like that, people didn't really gel as much as you would have in a normal exhibition game. But yeah. I love the fact that they played man all night. Um, I thought Naheem McLeod played great when he was in there, covering the middle of the paint and things like that. He had a couple blocks. Um, it looked like guys were a little bit more aggressive because they knew they had a seven foot four guy behind them who could clean anything up that they needed to. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, there's certain guys that you look at that, like JJ and Kyle and Quidier, Those are Malik. Those are guys, Benny, that you 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 know could be fine with man to man. I was very impressed with Chris Bell and Justin Taylor though playing man to man. I it, it, you can definitely tell that Chris Bell put on some weight and uh, he looked stronger, and it's it really showed last night for sure. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, I can echo all that. I mean, I, I just like you said. I mean, late to getting rotations, and like just things they won't be able to get away with. But there'll, there'll be growing pains in there, and that's fine. Um, but they definitely, yeah, like like Benny and Naheem are going to get blocks this year. They are. But again, that's not Kyle Filipowski down there. You know what I'm saying? That's not Benny. I will say Benny had two uh, ridiculous blocks. Uh, yeah, one was from behind, and he's like he swatted it, but. It, if you if you watched it quickly, it looked like he just grabbed the ball out of midair when he went up behind the guy. Yeah, yeah, he was like, "Give me that!" I heard him like he's <laughs> like, so I love that, and that's great. Um, it's better to it's better to rely on athleticism than not have any to rely on. Okay. Um, I but, thought. Go ahead. Oh yeah. uh, well, I will say, I, I know um, obviously Hema didn't play last night, but to know that they have a guy who's seven foot four. Um, and look great. And I mean, you saw flashes at Florida State of him defensively. Obviously, playing for Leonard Hamilton, you have to be pretty good defensively to play to even touch the floor. Yeah. Um, but to see that and to know that, um, I mean, you saw Hema last year with flashes when he would come in for Jesse and there'd be stretches where he looked really good. So to yeah. know you have two over seven foot guys who can, bl- who can block shots and be a defensive anchor in the middle of, um, the floor, it. I think it's going to let this team play more freely on defense and more aggressive. And um, I do think you'll see a lot more uh, full court press, uh, man to man full court press. They may even like throw in some and kind some of spots. zone yeah. full court press and things like that. Yeah, just in spots. I, I'd I'd love to see that. I've been. I, that was one of the things I advocated for a lot last year in the zone. Like so, they were so bad defensively last year. Why not play like a one-two-two and just like waste seven seconds of shot? Seven sec, not not to get a steal, but just to waste seven seconds of shot clock. So now they come down and they got twenty-seven seconds to work with instead of just well, let, probably even less than that. Like so, just now they got get now they got they broke the press. Now they got to get into their zone offense. But again, that was that was something I would have liked to see, but I didn't. Um, I think some of the fouling last night was also because two things, right? playing man for the first time in a long time. Um, I think a lot of them kind of like just in different places, they weren't accustomed to being on the floor, right? You weren't, you're not in your zone. Um, And again, also, I think that was relying on their athleticism. Like, Oh, well, I'll just get back in front of this guy. Yeah. I mean, they, (laughs) I I I can, I think (laughs) it, like you said, it had a big part in um, knowing that they were better than the opponent they were playing. So in their minds, they could use their athleticism to get away with things that, yeah, they normally wouldn't be able to get away with per se. Some things I liked, I did like, and I think though, I think in like real games that matter and count, I feel like they will switch it up more during the game. I liked that last night. I like, I like having the ability to. I don't think you need to just drop the two three. 
I really don't. No, 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 I, no. I love having the ability to go back and forth and like see what's worked, stop a run, throw something different at somebody, or like base it on your opponent. I thought they did a good good job of that last night. They played two three on inbounds, um, which was which was nice to see, and they stayed in it. Like some team, a few teams will, will play. Most teams play man, but a few will play two three on inbounds. Um, I mean, then, like, I mean, when you, when you man, really but, when you really look at this team, right, and you think of years where the two three zone was they're built for that zone, very honestly. good. Like I mean, you got guy, you got two guys at the top of the zone now, and JJ and Judah who are athletic, length, lengthy, uh, quick. Uh, guys that probably ever they probably both averaged two or three steals a game last year in the ACC. Like you have got, it's not like the two mm -hmm. two or three years ago when you had a Joe Girard and a buddy, or yeah, even a Joe mean. Girard next to a a, J, a Judah. But like you have guys, and you have Benny, and you have Naheem, and you have Malik, and you have Chance when Chance gets back. You have Quadir. I mean, you have guys who have the length that can really do it. So, I mean, it's not yeah. something that I think Adrian Autry is going to really take away from. Um, he may use glimpses of it at points in games. And, I mean, obviously, like you saw, there was games last year, like the Colgate game where Colgate just came in and shot the hell out of the ball. And at some point you're thinking to yourself, maybe we should try to get out of a 2-3 zone. But, I mean, I mean, we didn't have the team to guard man-to-man -man <laughs> last year like was we it, do. Was it, was it the Georgia Tech game last year in the Dome where they were like, they put up by it was like 103 points, and they decided to play man like the last like eight minutes, and it yeah. did and it did nothing. I, I mean, at that point, you were 24, so it didn't make yeah, too much it sense. Matter. <laughs> um, all right, so the so those are the basic thoughts of the game. Like I said, I, I would say I'm pretty I'm pretty pleased with it. Um, I think it's very encouraging night. Um, things I want to see on Wednesday, I'd like to see 35 40 minutes of foot on the pedal. Um, I, I'd like to see them continue to run. I'd like – there's not much more I really want to see. I, I'd like to see Judah and Jada on the floor together. Like, I'd like to see that. Um, but, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, there's not a lot that is, like, really concerning to me just because Damon can't really expose too much, um, and I'm assuming St. Rose won't be able to either. Um, and, really, Syracuse won't really have a test until Colgate. Um, and I don't think Colgate's going to be as good as they typically have been. I think they lost some guys. Uh, but I think what Syracuse opens with – uh, New Hampshire, New Hampshire, and Canisius. I think it's Canisius. Yes. Yeah. So, and they're both like sub two hundred and fifty Ken Palm teams. Um, speaking of Ken Palm, there, there is no way that that is the one hundred fifth best team in the country. Okay. No, there's, and they there's, look. I mean, if you no think way. about it, no they look that good without yeah. Judah. Yeah. And, no I mean, really, when you think about it, there was a couple guys that like. Chris Bell and Justin, they missed some very makeable shots as well. One hundred percent, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't want to get ahead of our uh, ahead of ourselves, but I'm I'm excited to see what happens in Maui. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, I I will I'm say one thing. Happens. I will say that I think that um, when when chance if chance comes back this year, obviously, that I mean, right now there's an F because we don't really know. Um, yeah. but I think they, I think you could really see them use ten guys nine, ten guys at most, and really put their foot on the gas. And, like, when you need a break, you can come out. We have guys that we trust enough to put in there and keep it going. Like, even yeah. Judah and JJ, you, you need a quick minute and a half, two-minute, mm -hmm. three-minute breather, come out. We can throw in Kyle or Quadir or Chance, yeah. keep it going, and then you throw them guys right back in. So I, I think you're going to see the depth. I think the depth is going to play a huge part this season. Um, I mean, obviously, like we've talked about, um, since JJ committed to Syracuse and Judah came back, um, with JJ Judah and Benny as your big three, it's going to be it's going to be fun to see um, who gets hot each and every night. Outside of that, mm -hmm. like you said, I know there'll, there'll be games where Chris gets hot and Justin gets hot, and yep, sure. um, Malik's going to stuff the stat sheet most nights that he plays because that's just the kind of player he is. Um, I think it'll be interesting to see Quadir get a chance early in the year with Chance out. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, you got there's, there's a couple of these guys you got to live with um, the little things that they yeah. that they do because they're gonna br bring more to your team than just the two turnovers. Yes. Um, and Kyle, uh, Kyle was very impressive. He he almost had a, a Judah type dunk before it got stuck in the rim. Which I was like, I can't believe he didn't hammer that breakaway layup. That. I thought he was gonna hammer that breakaway layup. But yeah, I mean, I so, remember that he had that he had that steal and layup. Yeah, yeah. Because all I saw of him before. 
getting here was the high school stuff, and he was doing some stuff. They said, I mean, they said coming in, he was a dude that when he went to, like, he was a big piece for Bill Self um, Mm -hmm. in that guard rotation, and he just couldn't stay healthy. So, yeah. I mean, as long as he can stay healthy here, I mean, he hit a couple threes, which surprised me um, for sure. Yeah. Uh, But yeah, I mean, I I think the couple things, like you said, uh, see some more, see some Judah. Um, It doesn't have to be 35, 40 minutes of Judah. It can be 20 to 22. Uh, yeah. I'll be happy with that, but just play 35, play a, a 40 minute game. Keep your foot on the whole 40 minutes. Let's see what this team can really do. Um, the season's right around the corner. Um, I know, like you said, they start with New Hampshire and then they play Canisius, then they play Colgate, and then they go to Maui. And their first game in Maui is against Tennessee, who, I mean, I you know, Tennessee, Tennessee's a stout defensive team. Um, I mean, obviously they struggle offensively at times, but they got some big boys out there in the SEC. Then no, then no matter what happens, you get Purdue or Gonzaga. So. Yeah, and I know Purdue just played uh, – they actually played Arkansas yeah, today. I didn't uh, see the score. They're playing now, or I might have just finished. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just little things. I mean, like you said, you the, the second half, I don't take much out of that. I mean, obviously you don't have Judah, and uh, there's some guys out of the rotation – uh, Malik didn't play much, and but I mean they still look good even with the loosey goosiness of the ball they had in the second half. So yeah. yeah, yep, I'm with you on the same page. Cool. Um, yeah, so we'll come back to you guys. I guess we'll uh, have something for you guys um, before the St. Rose exhibition. We'll do some research for you, let you guys know about those guys and what you can expect, and uh, then it gets real after that for the Orange. Um, so again, what what we got this week, we got, so we got Syracuse versus St. Rose Wednesday. We got Syracuse football on Friday night. Hopefully it's a, it's a good, uh, is it, is it it Friday? Is it it Friday? Right. Is it, that's what I thought. Was it BC on Friday night? Yeah, I think, I think so. I'm pretty sure I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Um, Um, the November 3rd. Yep. Friday, November 3rd at home. Uh, actually, Syracuse is at home the next two weeks. Uh, they play Boston College. Then they play Pitt. And I don't know if many of you watched. Oh. Pitt just got oh, – sorry. Alexa came in. Give me a second. Uh, Pitt just got dominated today by Notre Dame. It was like 51-7. to 7. Yeah, a home game against Pitt. In, yeah. in New York City. Yeah. Anyway. But, uh, yeah. But yeah, so we got, we got uh, St. Rose on Wednesday. And then the fun begins for sure. Yep. Then it gets real quick. Then All we right. St- Start November sixth, and I, we actually play November sixth and November eighth, which usually SU yeah. plays their first game, and then they have a week off before they play another one. Yeah, I think there's a, a little bit of a gap between Canisius and Colgate, and then it's, it's, like, five or, it's like it's like four or five days before Maui. But then after Maui, like it's it, it doesn't lighten up very much because Ma- after Maui they've got um, LSU and the uh, SEC. LSU, SEC. They got Lynch. Georgetown. They got. Oregon in December. Like there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of fun games, man. Like it's gonna be a lot of fun games. They have a chance. Um, I know we talked about it, but they have a chance early to really make a name for themselves. Yeah, we don't need to get distraught if they go one and two. They're probably going one and two in Maui. Like probably. Okay. Um, I could I, Tennessee's gonna be tough. I could see them maybe beating Gonzaga because Gonzaga's a little low for Gonzaga standards. Um, obviously they'll beat Shamanad if they Shamanad if they go 0 and 2. Um, but like they're probably going to lose two games in, in Maui, probably. Right. I, it's loaded. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's not a big deal. Nobody, that's fine. But the LSU game, the Oregon game, the Georgetown game, the Colgate game, those are very important games and games that they can slash should probably win. We'll see. I know Oregon, I mean, Oregon, Oregon's like a top 50 Ken Palm team. LFC is like a top 75. So they're not slouches. It's going to be, it's going to be a, it's going to be a battle, but those are games that will represent more middle of the pack ACC type games. It reminds you, it kind of reminds you of, uh, I mean, last year they had these opportunities and they lost to Colgate and uh, we got dominated when we went to Illinois. Um, I'll never forget that game. That game was horrible. I think Joe Girard went like one for 13 or something that year. Very bad sign. Uh, we had a, a highlight. Judah's highlight. Judah had a huge dunk. St. John's uh, game. We lost both of them. Oh, no. We won in overtime, and then we lost to St. John's. Lost, we should have beat St. John's. Absolutely. 
yeah. And so the schedule's great. And then you got, and then lucky for the Orange, they got a game to, heading to Charlottesville to tip off ACC play uh, in that early December game. So it lines up a little like, bit. How does Virginia look this year? Uh, they are third, fourth preseason. Um, okay. They are, so I'm, I'm, I'm an hour from Charlottesville, 45 minutes an hour from Charlottesville. I, uh, I get to hear a lot of that stuff, you know, and they're, Bennett likes them a lot. Bennett is pretty high on them. Uh, Beekman set Beekman feels like he is being disrespected. Um, somehow he's he, I, I still remember that that buzzer. Oh, no, I was just gonna say, I'll never forget that yeah. three he hit. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so he's After, still there. was it Buddy? Buddy hit like the three to tie it, yeah, and then he came down and hit the three to win it. So, um, yeah, so they, they lost a couple, they, they have a lot of new faces, but, um, it sounds like he, he's pretty high on them. So I think they're, I think they're ranked that preseason just because of who they are and how they kind of do things. And I saw a cool stat and then we'll end this thing. It was like, uh, in the last seven years, I think Duke was picked to finish first in the conference and, um, <laughs> six. Or it's like the last seven years, Duke was picked to finish first in the conference. They did out of six six of those years, they did not. And it was like the last seven years that UVA has picked to win the ACC, they have um, finished first. And uh, so, like, there's kind of like UVA, UVA and Duke. They uh, they don't like each other too much. They I mean, the ACC, like listen, the ACC is definitely uh, it's, loaded it's, this it's, year. There's some top. It's top heavy. It's top heavy. Like it's top, Duke's legit. Duke is a national championship contender. Carolina's going to be pretty good. UVA is going to be good. Miami is going to be good. After that, though, man, after that top four, like there's not anybody that think, really scares me. I, I think, I mean, you'll, we'll have to see them early. Um, I think Louisville could be part of that top four. With I know Kenny Payne kind of uh, flipped that whole roster. Yeah. They made some moves. I'll give them that much. They made some moves, but I don't know. We'll see. That's another day, another podcast. All right, man, you got anything else? I don't. All right. Well, that's us signing off. Subscribe to our subscribe, subscribe, like, do what you do. Um, give us a give us a follow on the YouTube uh, channel as well, and uh, we look forward to bringing you more stuff all year. Two down, what sixty some to go? <laughs> sixty some to go. <laughs> all right, signing off. See you guys.